plants. They're not as boring as you might think. There are lots of varieties, and some of them are so unique you'd be forgiven for thinking they're an alien life form. These are 20 plants that are only born once in a thousand years. Number 20. The Corpse Flower Amorphophallus titanum is its scientific name, however, this species is known as the corpse flower. Why such a gloomy name? Well, this flower is native to the tropical forests of Indonesia. In addition to its extraordinary size, it has another special characteristic that makes it unique. It gives off a fetid smell of rotten meat that has been exposed in the sun for several days, which makes it unbearable to stay close to for a long time. This flower is also huge. It can measure more than two meters and weigh 126 kilos. The function of this unpleasant aroma is to attract pollinating insects so they take charge of the exchange of pollen necessary for their reproduction. It attracts flies that looks for corpses in which they lay their eggs. The corpse plant can exceed three meters in height and has a tuber from which a single stem up to one meter long is born. On this stem grows a single leaf and a flower stalk. The flower grows very slowly at a rate of 10 centimeters per day. The pollinated flower transforms into a red or yellow berry and adopts a very curious globe shape that is worth seeing. The flowering of a corpse flower is a rare event. Due to its size and grandeur, this plant takes between 7 to 10 years to flower for the first time. After its first flowering, it only does it every 4 or 5 years. But the most incredible thing is that after waiting all that time to see the flower, it only lasts 48 hours. Before for fading. Every time the corpse flower blooms, it's an authentic attraction. Like this video, smash the subscribe button and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the odd topic. Take a look at this plant. Isn't it incredible? It looks just like the plant from Plants vs. Zombies. We've even put a character model from the game on the left so you can compare. But it's not a video game character. It's real. Rare, but real. As always, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag oddtopic. Number 19. Sheep Eater. This plant has medicinal properties. Its consumption helps calm diarrhea, gastroenteritis, and chronic fevers, and it's used as an emollient and astringent. But it also has some more sinister qualities. It gets its name due to the fact that grazing animals, such as sheep, get their fur stuck in the thorns in such a way that they eventually die. But there's another characteristic that draws much attention to this species. Its ability to self-combust. It's not known exactly why, but it has the ability to burn itself, and there's photographs and testimonial evidence to prove it. This phenomenon seems to occur in mature colonies, and it's believed to be caused by the accumulation of chemical products in the plants that are possibly combusted with the help of the sun. The result is an ember that burns without flame. They bloom in the spring between September and November, but it's not precisely its flowers that attract the attention of the market, but rather its heart. The union between all the leaves in the stem is, in fact, delicious. But what's extracted as food isn't even 30% of the plant. In addition, if it's cut at the wrong point, the extraction of the heart or pineapple can kill the plant. The problem is you can plant another, but it'll take at least four years to produce another pineapple. Number 18. Western Underground Orchid this flower is delicate, rare, and simply a wonder. These orchids are extremely difficult to find due to the fact that their status is considered vulnerable to critical. As you can imagine, habitat loss and degradation are the main threats impacting this Australian native plant. They live underground in symbiosis with mycorrhizal fungi. These rhizomes, or underground tubers, are short and thick without roots, which act as a store of nutrients for the orchids. The leaves are absent. As the orchid prepares to flower, the solid solitary inflorescence breaks through the surface, beneath the leaf litter, which is terminal and clustered. It gives rise to a group of small, tubular and hermaphroditic flowers. The fragrant head is about 5 centimeters wide and contains numerous small flowers. Pollination is carried out by small flies or insects, including termites or dipterans. The fruit is a fleshy, indehiscent droop with about 250 tiny little seeds. Its discovery in 1928 caused such excitement among orchid lovers 
that a wax model was toured throughout Britain, and thousands of people paid to look at it. You gotta remember, there wasn't really TV yet. Today, it's speculated that there are as few as 250 Western Underground orchids left across six or so known populations. Number 17. Tailpot Palm Horifa umbraculifera is a species of palm native to the Malabar coast in southeastern India and Sri Lanka. It is one of the largest palms in the world. Some individuals can reach up to 25 meters, with stems up to 1.3 meters in diameter. It is a palmate-leaved palm of the Arisaceae tribe Corophy, with long limbs, also called leaf blades, that can grow up to 5 meters in diameter and up to 4 meter long petioles with more than 130 leaflets. Yeah, it's safe to say this palm is massive. Talipot palm is also the plant that produces the largest inflorescence, 6 to 8 meters tall, consisting of millions of small flowers born from the top of the stem. This plant is monocarpic, flowering only once in its life between 30 and 80 years of age. It takes about a year for the fruits to mature, producing thousands of yellowish-green fruits of about 3 to 4 centimeters in diameter, containing a single seed, after which the plant dies. As you can imagine, seeing as this plant blooms only once in its lifetime, which means only once in a century, it's a pretty special event. It's widely cultivated in Southeast Asia and China. Historically, the leaves were used for writing. Number 16. The Bamboo Flower if you have some bamboo plants in your house, you may have had the opportunity to see them flowering, although it is not usual. The reason for this is that bamboos tend to bloom every 100 years or so, and once they do, they last for two years. At the end of the blooming cycle, the plant ends up dying. But is it true that flowering bamboo dies after seed placement? Well, the short answer is usually yes, but not always. When talking about bamboo, it's important to understand that we cannot generalize, because there are more than 1,700 different bamboos bamboo species known that have different flowering habits and different intervals. Also, there isn't much scientific evidence and study on when bamboo flowers, mainly because bamboo flowering intervals can be several decades apart. While the vast majority of herbaceous bamboos flower annually, most woody bamboos flower very infrequently. In fact, many bamboos only flower once every 3 to 150 years. Most species of woody bamboo are subject to gregarious flowering, which means that all plants of a particular species flower at the same time, regardless of differences in geographic locations or climatic conditions, and then die a few years later. In other words, when a certain species of bamboo begins to flourish gregariously, they do so all over the world over a period of several years until the entire forest and species has died, and then the cycle starts all over again. Number 15. Yuten Palau the one thing unique about the Yuten Palau flower that also makes it so rare is the fact that it blooms every 3,000 years. Yeah, you heard that right, 3,000 years. Yuten Palau is closely associated with Buddhism. It's native to China and is commonly known as Udumbara. In Sanskrit, it means an auspicious flower descending from the heaven. The flower is only one millimeter in diameter and emits a mild but noticeable sandalwood-like fragrance. That's why lots of people confuse them with tiny lace-wing eggs which also emit a sandalwood fragrance. The blooming of the Yuten Palau flower is believed to mark the arrival of a future king or the reincarnation of the Buddha. They also represent immortality. Bloomed Yuten Palau was recently sighted by a Chinese nun in Jiangxi province. While there have been various hoaxes on the internet regarding the Yuten Palau sighting, this tiny parasitic flower was actually found growing in Viet Lin on an aroid palm leaf. It's a delicate and precious flower, that's for sure. But what isn't really known for sure is what is it is. Botanists still can't work out if the plant is a moss or a fungus. Number 14. Encephalartus woodii. Encephalartus woodii, also known as Woods cicada, is a cicada of the genus Encephalartus endemic to the natal area of South Africa. It is one of the rarest plants in the world, being extinct in the wild, with all specimens being clones of the only ever discovered wild individual. It resembles a palm tree and can reach a height of 6 meters. E. woodii is dioecious, meaning it has separate male and female plants. The male cones are cylindrical and are bright orange. A single plant can produce around 
around 6 to 8 simultaneously. The female cones are unknown, as not a single female plant has ever been discovered. Encephalardus woodii also reproduces rapidly with basal shoots. Both the common and specific names honor John Medley Wood, curator of the Durban Botanic Garden and director of the South African Natal Government Herbarium, who discovered the specimen in 1907. The only known E. woodii plant in the wild was a four-stemmed cluster discovered by Wood in 1895 in a small area of Nagoya Forest. The smaller shoots were cut in 1903. Another expedition collected the two smaller stems and placed them in botanical gardens. Of the two remaining stems, the largest died during the period 1907 to 1912. The last stem was removed from the wild in 1916 and shipped to Pretoria, where it subsequently died in 1964. All known specimens of Encephalardus woodii are clones of that single known plant. Despite various inspections, no other plants have been located in the wild. For these reasons, the plant is considered an extinct species in the wild. Number 13. Nepenthes clipti. In Latin, the name of this amazing plant means round shield, referring to the leaf type that's reminiscent of a pitcher. This is perhaps the most endangered of all Nepenthes species, so much so that only an estimated 15 plants remained in the wild by 1995. It's a genus of carnivorous plant popularly known as pitcher plants or monkey cups. They are native plants of the tropical regions of the Old World. The greatest diversity is found in Borneo and Sumatra with a large number of endemic species. Many are plants from low lying areas with warm, humid climates, although most are tropical mountain plants. The name monkey cups refers to the fact that monkeys have been observed drinking rainwater from them. They normally have a superficial root system and a climbing or prostrate stem several meters long, 15 or more, with a thickness that varies from a few millimeters to one centimeter. Alternate sword-shaped medium green leaves about 30 centimeters long and with entire margins arise from this stem. An extension at the tip of the leaf forms the tendril, which helps it to climb, and at the end of this, the pitcher trap is formed, which initially emerges as a cocoon to progressively expand to form a globe or tube crowned by a sort of lid which contains an aqueous fluid or a kind of syrup produced by the plant itself where insects, attracted by the smell, fall and are digested. Number 12. Velvichia no, we promise this is not an alien. This imposing and bizarre-looking plant actually exists. The Velvichia lives in some areas of Angola and Namibia in Africa, specifically in the Namib Desert, the oldest desert in the world. Locals call this plant, apologies, a Tweeblar Canny Dude, which means two leaves that cannot die. Adapted to harsh conditions, Velvichia can live between 2,000 and 3,000 years. Some of the largest plants are thought to be over 3,000 years old with two leaves that haven't stopped growing since the beginning of the Iron Age. Isn't that cool? It has only two leaves of more than one meter each that grow 8 to 15 centimeters a year, and it's believed that the plant absorbs water through them. The Velvich plant, with a shape similar to that of an octopus, has attracted the curiosity of many biologists and scientists for growing against all odds in the extreme conditions that a desert presents. In a recently published study, researchers report some of the genetic secrets behind Velvichia's unique shape extreme longevity, and profound resilience. Their genetic history seems to correspond with their environmental history. Approximately 86 million years ago, after an error in cell division, the entire Velvichia genome was duplicated during a time of increased aridity and prolonged drought in the region, and possibly the formation of the Namib Desert itself. The duplicated genes are released from their original functions, assuming new ones such as the ability of enduring the unforgiving desert sun. Number 11. Penantia Baylissiana. This plant is commonly known as Three Kings Kaikomako and is a species of plant in the family Penantiaceae. As the name suggests, it's endemic to the Three Kings Islands, or Manawatafi in Maori, which are located about 55 kilometers northwest of Cape Ranga, New Zealand. At the time they discovered this plant, only one specimen remained in the wild and alive. This one remained probably due to the fact that it grew on a scree slope which was inaccessible to browsing goats. For this reason, and because it's the last of its kind, it has been dubbed the world 
world's loneliest tree. This specimen is a female Kaikomaku, and she was discovered in 1945 by Jeff Bayless, a botanist, and first described in 1948. And it took decades until it was fully accepted as a distinct species of Penantia. During the 1950s, this female tree was propagated from cuttings, one which was induced to self-pollinate in 1985. After that, the subsequent seed-grown plants have themselves set seeds, and today the species has been successfully replanted on the island. And not only that, also in the adjoining mainland and in public and private gardens around the whole of New Zealand. And just like that, the world's loneliest tree is now at the head of a very large and thriving family of Three Kings Kaikomako. Number 10. Ghost Orchid the ghost orchid is an exotic plant considered today in danger of extinction. For over 20 years, experts thought that it was extinct completely, but a recent discovery has ruled out its presumed disappearance. It is practically impossible to find this orchid in the forest. The places where there are greater chances of encountering it are the Bahamas, Cuba, and Florida, always in moist forests and swampy soils. It's a very delicate and capricious plant. When it comes to growing in environments that aren't suitable for it, it will die. The sowing and harvest require extremely precise and special conditions, which cannot have margins of error. At first glance, this plant is made up of only roots, stems and leaves being absent. The roots allow the plant to absorb all the nutrients necessary for survival. Likewise, the roots allow the plant to carry out photosynthesis as well as carry out the protection of its deepest layers against any potential threat. These roots are green in color and make up 90% of the plant's body. Usually, this plant tends to bloom between June and August. The name Ghost Orchid derives from the fact that its flowers can hang from the roots at the moment they adhere to a tree, which gives the impression that they are floating in the air like an eerie spirit. Number 9. Dragon's Blood Tree the Socotra dragon tree is an iconic tree with a long history of commercial use. It only lives on the island of Socotra, Yemen, where it grows within the remnants of the prehistoric Dragon's Blood Forest on granite mountains and limestone plateaus. It is an evergreen tree known since ancient times for its unusual appearance and red sap. The Dragon Blood tree resembles an open umbrella with a straight trunk which then branches out as the tree matures. The tree produces white or green flowers in February, which for five months months produce berries that change from green to black to orange as they mature. Both the berries and the tree exude a deep red resin, which is the inspiration for the name. The 34 million year separation of the island of Socotra from mainland Arabia has given rise to a unique flora. 37% of its plant species are found nowhere else. The tree is perhaps best known for the red resin that bears its name. Known to Socotrees as Emzala, it has a variety of traditional medicinal uses. Known to the ancient as cinnabar, it was well known in the trade before 60 AD, and it's believed that the dragon's blood dye was responsible for the intense color of the Stradivarius violins. Number 8. Middle Mist Red Officially, there are only two known places in the world where you can admire this gorgeous flower, the United Kingdom and New Zealand. This is probably the rarest flowering plant in the world. Also known as the Spring Rose or Red Camellia, it has two versions, the British one that was originally collected in China and the New Zealand one. This beautiful flower is named after John Middlemist, a citizen of English origin who picked it up on a visit to the Asian giant in 1804. Since then, it has been considered considered a rare flower, which could only be seen in the luxurious homes of wealthy families who could buy them. Middlemist donated his specimen to the renowned Kew Royal Botanic Garden located in southwest London, but it had disappeared along with all the other specimens of London and the United Kingdom, with the exception of the stately home Chiswick House and Gardens, which became, in 1823, the only place where the red Middlemist could be admired. Ever since Middlemist collected the strange flower more than 200 years ago, it has not been seen again in China considered one of the great mysteries in botanic history as it originates from that country. It's also not known how it came to New Zealand and how it survived there for almost two centuries. Number 7. Rothschild Slipper Orchid 
Hephaeopetalum rothschildinium is roughly its scientific name, and it's a species of the orchid family. It has several ribbon-like leaves that reach 60 centimeters long and 5 centimeters wide. The inflorescence, up to 45 centimeters long, has 2 to 4 flowers of about 30 centimeters in diameter. The cultivation is equal to that of the genus, but more light is recommended. It is one of the most expensive flowers in the world, mainly because 15 years have to pass from the time the seed is planted until the flower is born. With a name like that, you surely weren't expecting an ordinary flower, right? This large, tufted species only grows on Mount Kinabalu in Borneo at low altitudes on land and rock beds. It's considered one of the most endangered orchid species in the world, since it only exists in two sites and is highly sought after. The name of the genus comes from Cyprus, Venus, and from Petalon, which means shoe or slipper, in reference to its inflated, slipper-shaped labellum. Number 6. Karinji also known as Nila Karinji in Malayalam and Tamil, or as Strobolanthus kantiana by the scientific community, it is a shrub found in the Shola forests of the Western Ghats in Kerala, Karnataka, and Tamil Nadu. The Nilgiri Hills, which literally means blue mountains, got their name from the purplish-blue flowers of Nila Karinji, which blooms only once every 12 years. Of all the long interval, also called plethysial bloomers, Karinji is the most rigorously demonstrated, with blooms documented in 1838, 1850, 1862, 1874, 1886, 1898, 1910, 1922, 1934, 1946, 1958, 1970, 1982, 1994, 2006, and 2018. These do not have a coincidence with solar cycles. Isn't that cool? Following this easy pattern, the next bloom will be in 2030. The Palian tribal people living in Tamil Nadu used it as a reference to calculate their age. This plant flowers from September to October. Karinji grows at an altitude of 1,300 to 2,400 meters. The plant usually has a height of 30 to 60 centimeters. However, they can grow well beyond 180 centimeters under favorable conditions. The Karinji plant belongs to the genus Strobolanthus, which was first scientifically described by Christian Gottfried Daniel Nies von Essenbeck in the 19th century. The genus has about 250 species, of which at least 46 are found in India. Most of these species show unusual flowers behavior, ranging from annual to 16-year flowering cycles. Number 5. Quiver Tree have you ever seen an aloe tree? Well, here it is. Its scientific name is Aloidendron dichotomum, and it's a species of the genus Aloidendron native to South Africa. In Afrikaans, it's called Kokerboom, and it's probably the most spectacular of all aloe species due to its impressive and sculptural form. It's a plant with jagged branches that are covered by a thin white layer to help it reflect the sun's rays. The bark of the trunk forms a scale of golden and brown colors. The crown is densely rounded. The leaves are are bluish green and are born at the end of rosettes. The flowers are bright yellow. A common phenomenon in the branches of these trees is the huge communal nest of weavers who live and breed by the thousands. On the tree, their young are safe from birth from predators such as snakes and jackals. This tree prefers rocky areas near Nuadville in Namibia in the north and east to Uppington and Kenhart in South Africa. Number 4. Kadupul Flower have you ever wondered what's the most expensive plant in the world? Well, look no further. This is the one. The Kadupul flower, Sri Lanka's native blossom, is said to be the world's most expensive flower. In fact, it is so mind-blowingly expensive that it's kind of priceless at this point. But why? Well, first of all, you have to admit, this flower is gorgeous. So delicate and intrinsic, kind of like a work of art. And there's also the important fact that as soon as you pick the flower, it quite often dies. This is due to its cactus roots. Each flower has an extremely short lifespan, making them only able to survive the night before they fade to nothing at dawn. That's why some people call this flower the midnight miracle. But despite all this, the fragrance of the Kadupul flower is celebrated and highly sought after worldwide. The flower gives out a very delicate and distinct fragrance that has calming qualities. So if you want to experience this wonderful scent, the only way of doing that is to buy a bottle of Kadupul inspired perfume which are crazy expensive and very hard to find. Number 3. Sahina Plant 
Tahina spectabilis is a species of palm endemic to Madagascar, the only species of the genus Tahina. This plant is large enough to be visible on satellite images. Commonly known as Demarca, it is a huge, self-destructive palm tree that wasn't detected by science until 2007. Its extraordinary appearance and the genetic evidence indicates that this palm tree belongs to its own genus within a group of palm trees. It was thought that its distribution was limited to Asia. Efforts are being made to conserve this species through seed distribution and cultivation in botanic gardens. It is a rare variety of palm tree that dies after bearing fruit and that has a rather spectacular end of life flowering. This huge fan-shaped palm was discovered in northeast Madagascar. Until now, only a total population of 92 adult specimens and about 100 offspring have been surveyed. Due to the small number of their numbers, efforts have been initiated to protect their natural habitat. Where it grows is basically low, dry forest that can occasionally be flooded during the rain rainy season on land at the foot of heavily eroded limestone hills. Once its fruits have ripened and been collected by the lemurs who distribute their seeds, the palm tree loses strength, its enormous structure slowly collapses, and finally it dies. Number 2. Queen of the Andes it's called Puya Rimandii for scientists, but its common name of Queen of the Andes is much prettier. It blooms only once every 80 to 100 years at the end of its life. After blooming for a few weeks, it dies, but in those days, it produces about 10 million seeds. They are found only in Peru and Bolivia at altitudes between 3,000 and 4,800 meters, where very few plants are able to survive. Outside these locations, specimens are only found in half a dozen botanical gardens. Seeing how extreme the conditions are in which they naturally grow, the Queen of the Andes grows very slowly. Furthermore, they are normally found in small groups or as single individuals, which increases their genetic isolation and makes them more vulnerable to parasites and predators, some of which are new due to climate change. In a semi-desert environment with a few creeping plants and herbs, it dominates with its 10 to 12 meters in height. It's not known how it gets enough nutrients. Some say that it takes advantage of the droppings of the birds that perch on it or feed on its flowers, but there are also those that think it's capable of hooking animals with its spines. These birds or small mammals would die and their remains would fertilize the soil. It sounds pretty hardcore, don't you think? Number 1. Agave Flowers Agave, or maguey, is a typical product of Mexican gastronomy, mainly from the center of the country. Due to its difficult availability, it is considered a delicacy. It's consumed closed when it hasn't yet flowered, since when ripe, they become bitter. The agave plant is one of the most appreciated vegetables in the cuisine of this country. The fiber, the sap, the flowers, the quixote, which is the stem, and even the fungi and worms that live in it are used in the culinary industry in many different ways. There are 159 specimens specimens of maguey in Mexico, although the most important are Agave Americana, A. atrovirens, A. mapasaga, and A. salmiana. The plant flowers once it matures between 7 and 15 years of age, not the 100 years that gave rise to its common name of century plant. From its center sprouts the enormous quixote, which can reach up to 10 meters high. The maguey only blooms once in its entire life. After that, it unfortunately dies. Agave flowers are greenish-yellow and elongated in appearance. Each flower has six petals and inside three pistils with flattened seeds. As you can see, plants are not as boring as some people might think. Like any other living organism, they had to evolve, adapt, and overcome until becoming the version of themselves they are today. What about you? Which one of these amazing plants is your absolute favorite? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.